<laughs> yippee ki -yay. I finally found a way to get down there. And I ended up having to buy a new drill bit. Oh yes, I had to find that because the other one fell down in there and I couldn't find it. I even cut this hole open bigger. This, this, remember? I told you I was going to get a, a bigger one. And, and you know what you could do if you ever wanted to? If you had a big plate, you could measure, you could measure this two and a half by four inches, cut a hole two and a half by four or something, let's say. And, and then you could screw this right to the sheetrock. You know, later on with some little plastic anchors or something like that. If you don't want to spend the money for this, this was three dollars and oh, almost four dollars. And the single ones are like two bucks. So, you know, for the single ones, you could cut it smaller than a blank plate. Let's say, fish your wire down there, put a blank plate over the sheetrock if you wanted to save money. Well, as it was, I cut, I, I got this and... Uh, I'm gonna put that in there because now I've got to, I've got to uh, put that in. And I thought I, w I could have enough room to get my hand down there all the way down to the bottom. And son of a gun, I thought maybe my drill bit would be in there somewhere. It's not there. It is just not there. And you believe that? It's down inside the wall somewhere down below and there's insulation down there further and all that kind of stuff. I drilled um, after I got the drill bit, uh, I drilled like, I made four different attempts uh, with this long bit, flexi bit, push it down in there. And this wall is kind of different than most walls. It doesn't have a double bottom plate because this is a tenant separation wall. We're up on the second floor and there's a tenant on the other side of this. He's got a second floor on the other side here and his garage is down below that. And so when they built these, that wall goes from the ground all the way up to the roof. And I'll bet you this sheetrock goes all the way up to the roof. Okay, not just to the ceiling here. And then it goes beyond this and it keeps going all the way down. And they put some blocks, they did some funky, they did some funky things because this wall is only three inches wide, thick. Can you believe that? Three inches, most walls are Look, see that back there? It's three inches. I, I cut this sheetrock back just a little on the back side and reach my hand down in there. Here, you can see it right there, see? Three inches, can you believe that? And I don't know exactly how they did that because most wood studs, you know, three and a half inches wide. And down at the bottom, because these studs go full height inside this wall, um, they put some blocks like fire blocks and and they kind of they've kind of got and those are funky too but they had to do that uh, so that they had some place to nail the uh, baseboards and so when you when you stretch the carpets too you've got you've got a solid area there when they put their power stretchers on there in some places and then um, then they've got a row of other blocks down there because I could see them from the garage after I cut an inspection hole down there I must have been hitting uh, a nail, a, you know, how they toenail everything in, or they nail from the, from the joist, from the two by four over, something. I, I drilled literally three different holes, and the other day I had two, two different holes, and this thing just would not go through there. I kept getting it stuck. I even had to take my little pair of pliers. I had to take, I had to take the end off, take my pliers, and, and wrench it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on this, okay? Just to, just to try to get that loose from the, from the bottom. And um, then I would think, okay, let's try it again, go down there, and it just kept getting stuck, stuck. and I said, phooey on that, there's another way, there's always two ways to do different things, right? So here's what I did. I pulled the carpet. See, this carpet, when they stretched it, it's pushed in underneath, um, underneath the baseboard. And uh, so I gently pulled it out. Yeah, well, that was tricky. Pulled it out far enough and pulled it back far enough so I could get the bit in there without messing up the carpet, without messing up the baseboard. Drilled through the subfloor and then fished it down there and um, I got it. And man, where is, let me just show you real quick and you know my battery where is my 
battery daddy at it. Uh, I left it in the car and mommy just took off. I don't have my extra battery. My battery's getting ready to take a dump on me on my video camera. See, see up in there. Um, initially, I was hoping to fish down through this, but I cut, I cut a hole up in this and I can put that blank plate here. Here's, here's my, uh, here's my, uh, my steel tape, my steel fish tape through there. And that's packed with insulation and there's a, a plate here and up, up further. Uh, there's other plates and stuff and I was like, no wonder I couldn't get down through there. I thought it was at the wrong spot, but nope. I was at the right spot. And so, there it is. So now, now I'll, I'll bring my coaxial cable down here. I'll tape it to that. I'll pull it up through there. And then I'll route the coaxial cable over here. Then I'm going to have to put another cut-in box. I was thinking about this. I'm, I'm just going to bring this uh, surface mounted. And then I'm going to put a cut-in box here. And, and then uh, fish it down to here. I don't think there's a fire block in here. Well, there might. There might be one up high. I'll have to check that and uh, see what I've got to do for that. Okay, but then I want to fish it down to there. That's how I'm going to do it. And uh, uh, see, technically, I'm, I'm thinking I might have to patch this. I, I, maybe I should patch that hole. There's two layers of five eight uh, half inch sheetrock, and then put some fire tape over that. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll decide what to do on that. Um, because see, I still have that hole. I still have that hole up above. Technically, um, you know, he, the wall's not a rated wall now um, because I've got that hole in there. But you know, I was looking. The the codes here might not be as as stringent as other counties because some counties will make you uh, put. Your junction boxes in a temp in a separation wall, tenant separation wall, uh, has to be metal boxes with uh, metal Romex or metal uh, what do you call it? Uh, flexible conduit or, or or rigid conduit in there, and um, and then they actually take uh, this fire tape wrap around the box on the inside before they install the sheetrock. Okay, but this one when I took when I took that cover plate off. That's a plastic box there. There's a plastic box over there. That's that's a plastic box and it's two layers, a half inch, not five eighths. I don't know what's going on. It, and there's no electrical in this bay. So I, I'm not, I think I'm just going to put the blank plate over it and call it good. Okay, so here here's all my coaxial cable. So then I'm going to come up out of the carpet, see? I'll just come up out of the carpet and then zip it down along the bottom of the base and in between the base and the carpet and then once I get it up here exactly where I want it then I can gently push this carpet and, and right in here and force it back down under the uh, uh, the tax the, well push it back on the tax strip right here and push it down underneath the bottom of the baseboard and you won't you won't see hardly anything there because where I've drilled it, all of this area is all underneath there because I pulled the carpet back far enough to allow for that, okay? You don't want to just drill through your carpet or something because if you cut catch a carpet edge, you could zip one of your carpet uh, strands out, okay? All right, well, at least I got it through there. I'm a happy camper. Even though I lost one of my drill bits, my loss is your gain. And when I was drilling, this thing heated up back and forth, back and forth. And finally, uh, I thought I burned up the, uh, the battery. Luckily, I had a second battery here with me. And um, after about five minutes, I tested this battery and it still wasn't working. I thought, I think I just burned up the battery because it was smelling kind of hot. But um, after about half hour, I tested that in here and it works. So see, when, when your batteries get heated up, uh, it takes a while for them to cool down and for them to restart. Okay, so don't think if that happens to you, don't think that uh, you just burned up your battery. Don't throw it away too quick. Wait for a few hours, charge it, and, and see how it works, and uh, hopefully you can still get it to work. Okay, 
moving right along. I'm a happy camper, camper now. Momi can contact the coaxial cable or the uh, cable company and get them back out here and hook her stuff up and the TV. All right. Enough of that. Time for me to get back to work. Now something quick, I thought I was going to have to take all this wire down in the garage and then feed it up. I could have done that, I, but I can do it from the top down too. And I think I want to leave most of the remaining stuff up here. So I'm just attaching it, I'm just attaching it right to the, uh, right to the fish tape right there, you know. And then I'm going to let some more fish tape out and then I can just go downstairs and pull on the fish tape until I get that out. Pull it off the fish tape pull the fish tape back up and then pull this down. So you can you can do you can fish stuff from either direction if you choose to. Okay, I'm out of here.